Good morning. morning. I'm Pastor Steve. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship this morning as we celebrate All Saints Sunday and remember uh, those of our members who have gone on to the church triumphant. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, First of all, the calendar is on the yellow insert. And a reminder for those uh, who were involved in the district charge conference, that will be by Zoom this afternoon at three o'clock and you should have received a link to connect to that. Also a reminder, the Staff Parish Relations Committee will be meeting tomorrow evening at six o'clock to do my annual evaluation. So if you have any comments, see one of the Staff Parish Relations Committee members. And you can read the other announcements there. And Don has an announcement. Well, it's more, it's more of a thank you. I, we had the opportunity to, to visit with the Bobcat football team Friday. Had a really good turnout with nice meeting with the boys, really some good young men. Uh, I would like to just take the opportunity. We had, five, we, had, we had a really good turnout of volunteers, and I want to thank everybody personally for coming out, and I thought it was a good visit, good representation of the church. Thank you. Good. Thank you. All right, let's go to God in prayer. God of all holiness, you gave your saints different gifts on earth, but one holy city in heaven. Give us grace to follow their good example, that we may know the joy that you have prepared for all who love you. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to tell you more about that. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we, I need some enthusiasm today, people. <laughs> um, today we're going to talk about talents and abilities that God has given us. This is just a really pet thing with me that means a lot. Um, what I want you to remember while we're going through this is talents never take the place of monetary donations. They add to its value. Think about that. Sometimes it's hard to understand what your talent is, so we're going to play a game. Everyone, not just adults, the children that are here can do it too. Who remembers Simon Says? Everybody remembers Simon Says. Okay, y'all are practicing. That's what we're going to do. (laughs) Hands up. Um, Except that this game is called Jesus Asks. Um, I won't say Jesus asks each time because that'll really lengthen things, but um, that's what it's called. Simply raise your hand when I ask the question, and participation is the key. Don't be shy. Look around you. See who else is raising their hand, and maybe you'll think, hey, if they can do that, I can do that too. So let's get started so Pastor Steve can get us out for lunch. Okay? All right. Um, Now, Jesus asks, if you have ever served on a church committee, come on, people. Okay. Read to a child or a visually impaired person. Okay. Helped clean out the church flower beds. Served spaghetti at church. Sang in the choir or rang bells. <laughs> okay. Um, taught Sunday school. Okay, y'all pay attention to all these hands going up. Uh, led a book study. A few. Cooked food for a funeral meal. Cooked and delivered food to someone that just needed it. Okay. Painted a house or a room in a house. Just a couple more. Driven someone to the doctor. Mowed someone's lawn that needed assistance. Okay, so those are things that you have done. Let's look at what you can do. Can you cook? Can you knit, sew, or crochet? Can you cut grass? Can you read out loud? Can you clean? My husband would say no, (laughs) can I I clean? Okay, Um, pick up trash, can you pick up trash? Can you drive a car? Can you mail letters? Can you sell tickets? 
Can you change a light bulb? <laughs> Can you wash laundry? Trim hedges or mow a lawn? Okay, you may not think of these things as talents, but if someone needs your help, that's a talent that God has given you. And in closing, I found a quote from Pablo Picasso. I had to look up to see how old he was. He's gone, he's real old. But the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. So think about that. Think about these things I mentioned. See what talents you can give to the church and to Jesus and go for it. Okay? Thank you. And that's what the other insert in your bulletin is all about. Is possibly possible ways to use your gifts and talents in the church. So take this, pray about it, fill it out, and return it to the church office anytime. And we'll see how we can put your gifts to work. Let's continue to worship the Lord.
Good morning. Um, will you join with me in the responsive reading uh, that's printed in our bulletin this morning? Uh, the uh, reading is from Psalm 116, verses 12 through 15 and 17. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Psalm 116, verses 12 through 15. join with me in the, our historic confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will the children please join me down front? Good morning. Y'all doing okay today? Are you? Okay. You think it's funny sitting here waiting? Is it funny? Do you even want to know what we're waiting for? No? Okay, well, we'll wait a little longer then. Is anybody curious? Do you want to know what we're... Mary Benton's curious. Yay. Okay, so somebody wants to know what we're waiting for. We're waiting for Jesus. He's supposed to come today. I saw it on TikTok. Somebody was on there and said that God spoke to them and that Jesus was coming back today at 11.07. So I have one minute left. What do you think? You don't think so? Somebody else on Facebook said the same thing. So that's two things on the internet. No, it was two different people. So it's got to be true, right? You think so? Is it true? 
Well, it's 11.07. I see no blinding lights, no stranger coming in the door. So I guess it wasn't true, is it? Do we know when Jesus is coming? No. Nobody knows who Jesus, when Jesus is coming. It doesn't matter where we see it or who says it. Nobody knows when Jesus is coming. Not even Pastor Steve, unless God's been talking to him really openly. But I think he would have told us all by now if he knew that inside information, wouldn't he? The big thing about not knowing when Jesus is coming is whether we will be ready whenever he shows up. Are you ready for Jesus to walk in this door right now? No? Glad somebody's a little honest. Most days I feel like I'm ready. Some days I feel like, please, not today, Lord. How can we get ready for Jesus? We can ask him into our hearts every single morning when we get up and say, thank you, God, for being with me today, and thank you for giving me Jesus. Help me make it through this day and help me to keep him in my heart all day long. And I can promise you, if you keep Jesus in your heart every single day, when he does come, he's going to give you the biggest hug that you ever could have. So remember, we don't know when he's coming, but we have to be ready for when he does. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus and for giving us his love. Help us to prepare every day to keep him in our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. The children return to their seats today. Let us prepare to go to God in prayer. As we pray, let us remember those who are listed in the bulletin as well as others on your hearts and minds today. Let us go to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, as we worship today, we acknowledge that you are the one who sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to love us, to save us, and to heal us. God, we give you thanks that Jesus is our healer. And we acknowledge today as we remember those who are sick that sometimes that healing comes through prayer, sometimes through medicine, sometimes through a combination of medicine and prayer, and sometimes, ultimately, through the resurrection. God, enable us to turn our hearts to that time today, knowing that when we are healed through our own resurrection, that there will be no more sorrow, no more suffering, and no more pain. Lord, we long for that day. In the meantime, we pray for others and for ourselves that you would ease our hurts, heal us in body, mind, and spirit, And Lord, for those who are grieving this day, we pray that you would bring them comfort. And may we not grieve as those who have no hope, but may we grieve as those who are assured of the hope of the resurrection. Jesus being the first fruits of that resurrection and the promise that he would also raise us one day. Lord, bring us that comfort and assurance as we pray this day. As we pray also that prayer which Jesus taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And during this special service, 
We're going to honor those and remember those who have gone before us in death this year. I will be reading each one by name, and then a bell will toll in their memory, and then a rose will be given to family members or friends who are here this morning. Let us pray. O God of both the living and the dead, we praise your holy name for all your servants who have now finished their course in faith. Especially, we remember today Darlene Lloyd. We remember Janie Ray. We remember Sonia Branch. Remember Bobby Doodle Franklin. Remember James Buddy Wilson. Lord, we pray that encouraged by their example and strengthened by their fellowship, we may be partakers with them of the inheritance of the saints in light through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning's first scripture is from Mark chapter 13, verses 27 through 27, 24 through 27, and 32 through 37. Hear these words. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert, You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Invite us to stand as we sing hymn 701.
your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, how great is your name. We come this morning to praise you for all of creation comes from you. No matter what season we find ourselves in, there is always beauty around us. This time of year, the beauty that you paint with the changing colors of the leaves is magnificent. Your creations are endless gifts. We love you and are humbled beyond belief at the gift of your son, Jesus, who gave up his life so that we might be saved. Please accept these tithes and offerings and bless them so that your name may continue to be glorified in this community and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second scripture lesson today and the one for our sermon comes from the book of Hebrews, be reading from chapter 9, starting in verse 23. Hear and receive the word of the Lord. Thus it was necessary for the sketches of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, that is the Old Testament rites. But the heavenly things themselves need better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, 
as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is God's word for us this morning. <clears throat> John Wesley, one of the founders of Methodism, wrote in the preface to his written sermons these words. He said, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven, how to land safely on that happy shore. God himself has condescended to teach the way. For this very end, he came from heaven. Indeed, Christ came into this world that we will celebrate in just a few weeks at Christmas. And he grew up and he lived and he showed us how God wanted us to live. And of course, he died on the cross and then rose again. But on the evening before Jesus was crucified, he gathered the disciples together and had a last supper with them. And during that last supper, he gave them these words after he told them that he was about to suffer and die. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions or dwelling places. If it were so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And then Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. John Wesley wanted to know the way to heaven, and Jesus gave the answer. It's through him. I'm reminded of the story of the great evangelist Billy Graham, who was in a particular city in the United States to have a crusade. And he was walking the streets of the city one day, and a little boy came up to him and said, where's the post office? Billy Graham said, son, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, I don't live here. But he said, I'm doing a crusade in this city, and if you'll come to the crusade tonight, I'll tell you how to get to heaven. The little boy said, shoot, you don't even know the way to the post office. <laughs> Do you know the way to heaven? Through the gift of Jesus Christ who sacrificed himself on the cross for us. And as the scripture said, after he was crucified, he rose and then later ascended back up into heaven itself to intercede on our behalf. Christ, in the presence of God, on our behalf. Think about that for a moment. He's there for us. The scripture said that's why he came. He came to sacrifice himself for us, to remove sin. Verse 25 said it wasn't to offer himself again and again as they offered animal sacrifices in the Old Testament, but once and for all. The scripture lesson said, talked about the high priest in the Old Testament. And the high priest would take the blood of the animal sacrifices and only once a year, they did animal sacrifices daily, but once a year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies in the temple and sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat to make atonement for the sins of the people. Every year, once a year, 
But Jesus came and offered himself once, period. Once for all time, for everyone, to remove our sin. Some of you might remember the name of Charles Colson. He spent time in prison for his part in the Watergate scandal. After serving, well, he became a Christian somewhere during that time. And after he was released from prison, he founded a ministry called Prison Fellowship, which seeks to reach out to inmates in various prisons and restore them and redeem them by enabling them to come to Christ and change their lives. He visited prisons all over the world in order to promote prison fellowship. On one occasion, he was in Brazil, and he went to a prison that was run exclusively by Christians. And he said, I found the place clean. He said, I found the inmates smiling. People were working hard, and on the walls were verses from the Psalms and the Proverbs. He said, the person guiding me through the prison that day took me to a room where formerly they tortured people because of their crimes. And he told Coulson, now that room only houses one inmate. They went and looked in the door, and inside was a crucifix, cross with Jesus upon it. The inmates had carved it. And the inmate said, he's doing time for all of us. Jesus came. He did time for all of us. He paid the penalty that should have been ours for our sin in order to save us from our sins and ultimately to save us from this sinful world. Retired Bishop William Williman said, quote, Salvation means finally, safely to arrive where you have always been intended by God to be. End quote. We long for that day when we're fully and finally saved. The last verse of our scripture lesson said that Jesus, who came that first time as a baby, is going to come a second time. Not to deal with sin, because he already did that the first time, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him to save us from this sin-filled world, and to save us for heaven. Because that's our destiny. Book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 said, We're citizens in heaven. Ephesians 2.19 said, We're citizens with the saints. This earth is not our true home. We're just pilgrims passing through on our way to our heavenly home. And today we remember those who have gone before us to be there. I read this week about a pastor who retired. Upon retirement was able to buy his own house for the first time because he'd always lived in parsonages. And when he bought his house on one of the walls, he hung 20 large black and white photographs of his ancestors. Some of them went all the way back to the Civil War. And he said he calls it the great cloud of witnesses wall. And he put it there to remember those who had gone before him and paved the way. He said if he would have had pictures, he would have had hung on another wall, Abraham and Moses and King David and Peter and Paul and others. Those saints who have gone before us. But one day we will join them in heaven someday because Jesus has shown us the way. It says he's coming a second time to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. As Rose told the children, we wait, but we wait in expectation, not knowing the day or the hour when he will come. As our first scripture lesson said, we need to wait eagerly. I said at the beginning, John Wesley wanted to know one thing, the way to heaven. Someone once asked him, why are we in this world? And his answer was, for one sole purpose and for no other, 
to prepare for eternity. Are we preparing for our arrival in heaven? We prepare by accepting the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf to forgive our sin. And as we wait, we live our lives for Him as our Savior and our Lord. Let us all be prepared for when our time comes. Amen. Invite us to stand as we sing hymn number 364.
And now as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion and remember that sacrifice that Jesus made for us, you can go ahead and be seated and turn to the inside of the yellow insert in your bulletin that says the prayer of confession at the top. And let me prepare the table. We prepare to receive Holy Communion. You need not be a member of this church or a United Methodist part to partake. It's the Lord's table and all are welcome who wish to come. Of course, we're still using uh, the prepackaged elements. And after we conclude the service, you're welcome to come and receive those either at the communion rail or as you leave this morning. Let's prepare our hearts to receive by praying together the prayer of confession. Our gracious Savior, how many times must we fall before you in repentance? We are so broken. We desire to be holy, but apart from you, we are nothing. Thank you for forgiveness that is higher and wider and deeper than the ocean. Your grace extends beyond the sky. We confess our weakness and failure, knowing that you see us no longer as sinners, but as holy children, chosen and dearly loved. Pick us up, for we have fallen. We choose to run to you. We are your grateful sons and daughters. Amen. And now responsively, may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give the Lord our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph. God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. For the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God, pour out your Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And as you partake this day, <clears throat> as you receive your wafer, remember that this is the blood of a body of Christ, which is broken for you. And remember, this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Lord bless you, all who partake today. May they know that you are with them, have forgiven them, and have raised them up to new life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The acolyte come forward. Would you stand for the benediction? And now may that peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.